How can we get more rest? And do we worry about us falling into a pitfall of laziness? That's what we'll talk about today. Rest is valuable only so far as it is a contrast. Pursued as an end, it becomes a most pitiable condition. David Swing. Today we're going to talk about rest. Boy, if you ask me about the people around me and when I look out at people, everyone seems exhausted, tired, and have just been beaten up this year. I know a lot of people are stressed out when it comes to activities or money or the situation in the world. People are just exhausted. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about rest and how we can get more of it and different kinds of ways that we can rest. And then are we worried that we're going to fall in some sort of a bad habit? Does it mean that we're lazy if we rest? That's what I want to talk about. So there are so many different kinds of rest. And of course, the big obvious one is, boy, sleeping, taking a nap, going to bed early. That's the most obvious type of rest right there. I know today I'm a little bit on the tired side. I've just been busy all the time. I took a massive nap. It felt great afterwards. It was just the thing I needed. But the important thing about the nap was that it didn't just happen to me. I told myself, today, you get the mother of all naps. You've kind of had it. You got a lot going on and you have a lot coming up. Let's just take a big, long nap. And it was worth everything. I thought it made the world of difference in my day today. And then I was able to wake up and go do other things. It was the perfect decision to make. There's other times I remember my grandfather or my father, they would do what they call relaxing, which meant that they would just sometimes just sit on the couch and do nothing. I'm not that kind of gal. It would make me a little wiggy if I ended up just lying on a couch doing nothing. I mean, I could think and I could do other things, but uh, I couldn't do it. But you know what? Other people can and they find it just the act of not doing anything and just decompressing is valuable and something that you might find helpful. Then there's such a thing as called as guided imagery or guided meditation, I guess. I don't know if it's actually meditation, but we used to do this in gym class in my high school. It's kind of weird and I'd fall asleep every time. But the idea is that you are walking through a happy nature scene, a beach, you know, anything that you find relaxing, any place that has all the senses that just calm you down. And sometimes you can do this, and I've been working on this one a lot, is trying to get myself to be able to do my own scenery. When I went to the whole rainforest in Olympic National Park, I thought it was one of the most beautiful places I had seen in the United States. There's a few other places in Iceland. And what I try to do is when I'm falling asleep and having some struggles, I will try to take myself walking, you know, on the beach or you're walking along this forest and you smell the moss. The whole rainforest seems to do the best for me, but I try to imagine me walking on this path. And the reason I want to do guided meditation on my own is so that I can do it anytime, anytime I'm struggling to sleep. But there's other ways of doing it too. And one of the best ways I found is through Headspace's sleep stories. They have this formula down. I don't know what it is about it, but you're taken on this little adventure. And some of them have some funny imageries in there. There's one where someone is building a house on top of a redwood forest. Now, that would be really high up. But I can tell you that those stories have some sort of a formula to them. The voices are read properly that I am out in a matter of minutes. So those stories, for whatever reason, have been the best ones I've ever heard. I've tried other things. There's some podcasts out there with sleep stories. There's some other guided imagery storytelling on the internet and in podcasts and on YouTube and all that. But the Headspace sleep stories are just among the best. But they just take you on this very calm journey. There's other types of imagery that are not quite as complete as the sleep stories or these guided imageries where you imagine you are lying on a beach and you feel the sun and you go through each part of your body. It's beaming on your foot. 
and it's moving up your ankle. Now it's on your knee. And you try to imagine this intense warmth as it's going through each body part. And you're supposed to think of those muscles relaxing or letting go. There's also an imagery too, where you're imagining that any sort of soreness or tiredness easing out, you know, maybe in a black cloud and evaporating away from your body. So even if you aren't going on a walk with this big guided imagery bit, you have some other minor imageries that you can take and just go along with it and just relax your brain. Focus in on that. Again, if you're looking for some meditations too, Headspace just has some amazing meditations of imagining pushing the clouds of the storms in your brain away. And maybe you don't feel like sleeping or napping or having any sort of guided imageries or meditations of any kind. There's other things that you can do. You can go for a walk. I prefer to go for a walk in nature. I have this beautiful little park near my house, full of birds, has some turkeys in it too. Really enjoy being there. And it's so peaceful and it's so close to my house. It's just a easy place for me to get away. Maybe you can also even listen to music, either with your eyes open or your eyes closed, but another great way to relax when you're very stressed out. Not sleeping, not napping, but relaxing instead. Maybe it goes along with what my grandfather used to do too. And if you live in a place that has beaches, sometimes people just like to sit at the beach or sit along a river and just watch the water. Very relaxing, calming to just go outside and watch something. I think as immense as the ocean, I'm not much of an ocean person. I don't live near an ocean, but I get it. You know, you're sitting in a forest and you're watching the wind blow through the trees, you know, something like that, where you just get outside your own body and just witnessing kind of an amazing moment in nature. And, and if you don't feel like going for a walk or doing any of those activities, sometimes it's great to just go for a hot bath. Hot baths, I think, are underrated. They are one of the most relaxing things you can do if you get the mood right. Turn the lights down a bit, maybe get some nice music going in the bathroom and taking a, just a hot bath. You walk out of there feeling so relaxed and so calm. It's a great way to go in order to get some relaxation. Some other things that you can do are spending good time with your pets. Sometimes we get so busy and we're rushing here and there or doing this and that, and we forget to just hang out with our cats and our dogs and have fun. Go in the backyard, take the dog out to a dog park, and just enjoy your time together. I know one of the things is I always had cats, and we got busy. You know, I'd be doing my thing, they'd do their thing, and we'd sit and we would watch TV together at night. During the pandemic, I really got to spend quality time with them. I know, cat lady, right? But it was really enjoyable to just play with them on the floor, snuggle with them during a nap. When any time they heard me going to the place where I like to take a nap, boy, the cats would run right up, jump on either side of me, and we'd all take a nap together. It's very calming, but having that nice time with pets is a good way to relax and rest when we're just feeling tired. Sometimes you can do some mental exercises when you're just exhausted and looking for a nice way to relax. That could be something like journaling writing stuff down, getting it out of your head so that it's not spinning around in it. Once it's down on paper, somehow, I think it makes it more objective. It makes it not so close to us. And we can look at things more clearly when it's down either on paper. I like to do digital journals like day one and some other types of projects. It helps to just get it out of your system. And once you do, I find it also helps you get to sleep at night because now you've written it down and you've sort of offloaded it out of your brain. Also, getting some exercising, going out, like I said, for a walk or a bike ride, or if you live in a ski area, but getting some vigorous exercise can really de-stress you. And if you would have told me that ages ago before I started exercising, I would have said, no, exercise is the opposite of relaxing. Relaxing is taking a nap or sitting on a couch and reading a book, but Exercise is very relaxing. It tends to get out a lot of the strong emotions that are building up inside of you. And so I think it's a good way to go. And maybe even then you can take your dog along with you for your walk. I don't know. My cats wouldn't have done the walk very well. Praying is a great way of relieving some tension and some stress with you. 
I did on my other podcast, Small Steps with God, a book that was called Still Tape, which is about the Dutch art of quiet. And it encouraged you to create a place where you could have quiet. And so I took my recording studio, I've redone it in the last month or so, and put a little chair in there, put some nice blankets. I put in perfect lighting just to make sure that I can have dim lights when I'm looking for some dim lights. It's bright lights when I'm trying to record or do some work in here. But now this is my still day place. This is a place where I can have peace, quiet, read a book, just relax, pray. And I think that having a nice quiet spot is a great way to relieve stress. Doesn't have to be a money thing. It doesn't have to be a room that you buy yourself into so that you can buy all this stuff to put in your room. In my case, I just took a chair that was downstairs and moved it upstairs. Again, I got some nice lighting in here so that it was nice and calming and the blankets. It gets kind of chilly in this room, so having some cozy blankets made it perfect. But this is now my stilte room. This is where I get peace and quiet and meditation with God. The other thing, too, is if you're looking to just relax, another obvious thing is you watch a movie, your favorite movie, maybe a movie you've seen 20 times, but you enjoy it every time. Or you work on a special project just for you. I'm working on an art project right now for my recording room, and it's just something for me. I'm hoping that it will be neat. It's a waste of time. It doesn't really get me anywhere other than the fact that it's kind of artsy and it's going to be pretty once it's done. I'm also trying to learn how to draw a little bit. And so I've been going through YouTube videos, painting, drawing while watching them. So sometimes just working on a project, even particularly an art project, can be incredibly relaxing. Or you just want to work on a project just for you. You had a room, maybe it was messy, maybe the closet was all done. Maybe you'll find it very relaxing to work on the room so that it's more what you always wanted it to be. A lot of times I think people get caught up in projects for other people. They're always doing something for their kids, their spouses, their friends, their family. So when you have a project that's just for you, that can be incredibly satisfying, but like I said, relaxing too. What about engaging with other people? If you called your friends, you watched a good movie together, you went for a walk together, or you just sat around laughing. My best friend and I, we just spend all our time laughing. We tell each other funny things, and every time we work on anything, it's always a hoot. We're working on another podcast together, which is going to be about nature. And half the time when we're up here recording in my stilte room, we're laughing. We get more laughs in than I think we get recording time, but it's fun and enjoyable and stress relieving. So try to think about who you could engage in some sort of event. And then think too about maybe having an event. This is where the money kind of comes in, but can you go and get a massage? Can you go to a spa day? I've been to a spa once in my life. The company I used to work for on our 10th anniversary took us to a ski lodge and gave us $100 each to do something. And so some people went skiing, other people got massages, some people went on horseback riding. I did, for the first time in my life, got a massage in this spa activity. And you know what? It was very relaxing. So if you do have the means, maybe taking a mini trip, getting an Airbnb in the woods, going someplace where you can actually have some peace of mind, some solitude and just get away from it all. Getting away from your home or your normal location can be relaxing and also give you perspective if you're having some things to think about. Going out for a great meal, whether you're by yourself or with friends, is also great. It's another way to have a night out. No expectations, nothing you have to do, but another good way to relax. And then there's the opposite thing of doing activities to help you relax. What if you cut out the things that caused you stress? If there's something that you're doing that's very stressful to you, can you cut it out? Or maybe even temporarily cut it out. Some obligation, some sort of thing that you're doing that is very stressful, 
maybe you could take a break from it and see if you just get some rest by not doing that stressful thing just for a little bit. So those are some ideas when we think about rest and ways that we can get some rest. And I hope that gives you some ideas about what you can do. Like I said, it just feels like this ball of stress is on top of everyone right now. Everyone's having some struggles with it. And so how do we judge now? Are we resting or are we being lazy or maybe getting ourselves into a rut? If we do it too often, if we do it all the time, if we make no progress in our goals or our lives, yeah, then maybe we are being a little bit lazy into that. And if it's the default thing we do, I come home from work and I play video games. I come home from work and I take a nap for the rest of the night or I do nothing for the rest of the night. That feels like we've fallen into this aimless kind of behavior. One of the things that you can tell if you're being lazy or resting, is it something that you do on occasion or is it something that you do by default? Some ideas is that, first of all, you should think about is that rest should have some sort of purpose in mind. I know that sounds really weird, but for me and my nap, I was exhausted. I needed some rest. I got some. Or if I'm working on a project or some sort of a book, I am intending to do that. It's not something I'm falling into, defaulting into, doesn't end up making me less motivated in life, less inclined that I'm going to do something later. Like I'm going to sit down and watch TV and now that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the night. As compared to I did something to rest for a little bit, I watched a TV show, I watched a movie, and now I'm on to do the next thing. Or maybe it was the last thing I did for the night, but I did other things. It can be refreshing. Is it demotivating, causing you to do less other things, or is it motivating you? Is it resting you? Is it making you more inspired to do other things? That's kind of how you can tell, too, whether rest is being beneficial to you. Rest should refocus you. It should refocus your brain. It should give you new ideas and fresh ways of thinking about your problems instead of spiraling away from them, moving away from the things that you should be doing. And so that's another way we can see. And then the other part of it, is it causing us to procrastinate? Are we doing nothing because we can't think of anything to do? Or we don't want to do anything because we don't want to do our responsibilities. We're avoiding them. Or we're avoiding progressing in life. We're not getting the next job. We're not getting the next dating partner. We're not doing something. We are using rest as an avoidance to our lives. That's one step to know that it's maybe not what you should be doing, that you should actually be motivating instead of demotivating. And in the end, rest shouldn't be something that is causing us to procrastinate, isn't something that makes us feel insecure. Oh, I can't do anything. I'm just going to sit on this couch for a while. And when we're resting, we're actually growing and strengthening from the position instead of weakening. When you're resting, there's a time when you'll be done resting and you'll know that difference between it. When we're lazy or we're just unmotivated, that could go on forever. There is no end point in mind. If we're feeling more calm, more thankful for our lives, more at peace with who we are, then maybe it's rest. But if we're feeling angry, unwilling to do the things we want to do, unwilling to think about the things we want to do, then that might be more like laziness. It might be something that we are just afraid to move in any direction. And so in the end, it's important that if you need a break, take a break. You beating yourself into the ground is not how you want to go about it. But you also don't want to do nothing. You don't want to be habitual about this. You don't want to make this the only thing you can think of to do. I remember when I was a kid, we always did that, right? And we're like, Mom, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. There was always so much to do that we could have done as kids. We could have gone and seen. But we just got lazy, to be honest with you. Laziness happens. It happens to kids. It happens to adults. But resting 
is instead something we do so that we can be prepared for the next challenge, our next thing that we're going to tackle. So make sure that if you can't think of things to do, come up with a list. I have a list of all the things I can do in every season, winter seasons, summer seasons, or times when it's dark out at night. I have a project that I can find at the drop of a hat. If I didn't already have four podcasts I'm working on, I would also have other things to do too. So if you can't think of things to do and you feel like doing your hobbies or playing a game or watching movies or TV is what you do by default because you can't think of something to do, start thinking about something to do. (laughs) Start giving yourself some goals. And while you're trying to relax, of course, you could do nothing or what my dad called relaxing. You could also relax by doing something. And again, creating art, working on a hobby, working on a project in your house you always wanted to get done. Relaxing is a way that you're trying to restore yourself. It doesn't mean that you're not going to do anything. And you're going to have to find out for you what that thing is. And again, if you feel like you're being lazy, or you're doing this by default, start drawing up plans of what you can do instead so that you're resting and not just doing nothing by default. So my challenge to you is write down five ways that you could relax. One, when you're trying to sleep or nap and you just can't bring yourself to do it, consider creating a relaxation method that'll help you sleep. One, that will help you relax when you want to be active maybe going for a hike or going biking or something like that. One is a hobby that you find relaxing that you would love to work on. Four is you doing something around the house, a project you've always wanted to get to that would relax you in just taking your mind off the regular things. And then the last one is think of some fun things that you do with friends that could be your go-to item whenever you're feeling stress. What's the one thing you'd love to do with your friends that would just make your day that much more de-stressing and relaxing? All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I hope you're enjoying the podcast and you're welcome to leave reviews or let me know what you think about the podcast itself. And if there's a topic that you would like for me to talk about, I'm happy to do that too. And remember, our walk requires rest and small steps.